it's Greg from Cutting Edge Stencils, and we have another episode of How to Paint and Stencil with me, Greg Swisher. We're in Ramsey, New Jersey at the Cutting Edge Studios. And if you've been tuning in with us, you'll know that we started to give away stencils on each episode. We feature a stencil. Today, we're featuring hand-drawn chevron. This is, again, one of our most popular stencils. It's a real winner. It looks great, brings a little verticality to the, to the space, uh, right on trend. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you a little bit about basic wall painting and stenciling today. And at the end of the episode, I'm going to ask a question. And the first person to answer the question correctly in the comment section will win this hand-drawn chevron. But everyone is a winner today because we will offer this stencil at 40% off at CuttingEdgeStencils.com by putting in Chevron 40 in the coupon box at checkout. You're going to save 40%, so everyone wins. And there's one more winner. If there's a local person watching, once I'm done demoing this stencil, if you want the used stencil, come down and pick it up. Uh, reach out in comment section. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll set up a time for you to come pick it up. Okay, so today uh, we are going to go over a couple of basics on painting the wall and stenciling. We've already talked about picking colors in the space. We've talked about preparation. Uh, and each episode, we're going to dive in a little bit more, get a little specific about a, per, uh, a certain aspect of, uh, say, the preparation or the painting. <clears throat> so just because it's right in front of me, let's take a look at this sample. I just want to show you this right here. And I don't know if we can capture it in the light, but this is a sample of a flat, an eggshell, and a semi-gloss paint. And we're often asked, what's the difference? When do I use these? And I don't know if you can see the sheen difference in there. So this has got a nice sheen to it. It's uh, a little more durable. This has got a light sheen to it. It's somewhere between a flat and a semi-gloss. And this is your flat paint, which has very little light reflection to it. So just to give you a couple quick pointers on this, I like flat finish for a lot of reasons. Uh, you can touch it up. And what I mean by that is you can take a roller or a brush and go over top of this and it should melt in really nice because it's not reflecting light in a different way. When I come in and I touch up an eggshell paint or a semi-gloss paint, what can occur is called flashing. And that's because this layer of paint is sitting on top of the layer underneath and it's reflecting the light slightly differently and you see a halo or a glow around it or you see the brush stroke or you see the roller application. So although these paints that have a sheen, more of a sheen, are more durable and more scrubbable, they are not as easy to touch up. So you just have to weigh that. Uh, another thing is if your wall is not in the best of condition, let's say there's a little bit of waver or uh, uh, a little bit of a texture to your wall, I would go with a flat finish. Flat, because it doesn't reflect the light, is going to make the wall look the best. As soon as you have a reflective surface and you have a wave in the wall or a dent in the wall, the light's going to reflect that differently and you're going to see it. The shinier the paint, the more your imperfections will show. That's basically the rule of thumb. Uh, okay, so I'm going to show you some basics here. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to take a tray. I have a tray liner. I kind of like working like this. I have a 3 8 inch nap roller. This is a used roller cover. Uh, I like to use roller covers because the little hairs have already come off. One trick you can do if this is a brand new roller, what we can do sometimes <clears throat> is we take some tape and we remove the loose lint. So usually I'll brush it and I'll remove the loose lint if it's a new roller and this will give me <clears throat> a cleaner surface and it's not, I won't have little balls of lint mixing in with the paint 
<clears throat> and then we're putting that on the wall. So that's why I actually like used rollers, because uh, after I use it, I take my trusty five tool with the curved uh, area here, which we talked about. What is that for? That is for scraping your roller cover, scraping the paint out as you're running it underwater to clean it off. Great, great uh, to know, great to save the paint, great to save your roller head. I just uh, am a firm believer of uh, not throwing things in the landfill if you don't have to and uh, reusing them. It's good for you, value, and um, just a great, <clears throat> great thing to do if you have your tools already uh, taken care of. They're there for you next time. You're not running to the store having to go uh, buy another roller head. You know, get your 10 uses out of that. Okay, we got some <clears throat> Navajo white. Uh, happens to be Ben. We happen to love this paint. Benjamin Moore Ben. Cheaper than uh, Regal Wall Satin Flats. This is a flat paint because as I said, flat paints do not show your imperfections on the wall. Uh, and that's probably the biggest benefit and they can be touched up. Um, so I'm going to open this can and you can see, you can use a five tool, this little area right here and you pop it in and you just rock it back. You spin it and you rock it, and that's it. Top is off. This paint <clears throat> just came off the shaker, so I don't have to stir it. If this paint was sitting around, get yourself a paint stick. They always sell it, uh, keep these around the house, and dig deep and stir your paint, and this way the glycerin will mix in because the glycerin tends to come to the top. If you don't stir it, you've got this watery paint on top without all the pigment. It's not going to cover. It's not the way it's supposed to be used. Stir it from the bottom. Let me give you another tip. This, we're talking about stirring. Don't ever shake clear coat. If you did a tile floor and you're going to put a clear coat on, or you uh, did a tabletop in a finish or a stencil and you want to put a clear coat on there, do not shake the can. When you shake it, you incorporate air into it. You get air bubbles. Those air bubbles are in the finish and they don't always settle out. It's going to give you a worse finish. So what you want to do is you always want to stir from the bottom and that's how you uh, uh, are going to do your clear coats as well as your regular paint. I tend to just have, uh, it depends. If I'm using uh, a brush, I'll have a brush handy and I'll wipe the rim of the paint after I pour it. If not, <clears throat> I'll have a paper towel just nicely folded up. Um, so what you do is pour your paint into your tray and shake it like that. I've got my paper towel right here. I wipe that <clears throat> and I clean the can, and then <clears throat> and I'll clean the rim of the lid. And I kind of fold it like so, fold the paper towel so it fits in, and I kind of curve it so it pushes the paint back in. So let's see here. So I push the paint back in, I've cleaned the rim, now I can cover my paint and I'm good to go. I'm only tapping it lightly for now because I know I'm coming back into it. I'm going to put this on the ground. <clears throat> I'm grab another paper towel for myself. Okay, so we've got our 3 8 inch nap roller cover. We poured our paint into our tray. I'm using flat paint because it's not going to show imperfections in the wall. It's not going to highlight that. And now you're going to load your roller. So deliberately and evenly load it. Do not just plow the roller into the paint. If you start getting paint all over the sides here and here, that's when you start to get into problems. I'll be rolling it on the wall and I'll start to leave these two railroad track lines on either side. What you want to do is you want to keep the paint only as deep as the nap here. Try not to get it in here. Try not to get it here. If you do get it there, you take your brush and you clean it off. So look, I'm loading it up. I'm palleting it by rolling it into this 
area where there isn't paint. That helps to evenly distribute the paint around the outside of the roller. And it's going to take a couple passes to get your roller fully loaded. I'm just going to come up here to the wall and this is, we have a squeaky roller handle, WD-40 to the rescue. So this is it. I would have already cut in, cut in meaning taken my brush and cut, cut a line at the crown molding, cut a line at the baseboard. I already would have done that. Uh, and I would roll this and I would actually turn this sideways and go like so, come down. But you see, I'm not getting paint on the edges here. I'm keeping the roller clean. Basically, if you work clean, your result is going to be better. It's that simple. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to push this aside for a second. I am going to grab some black. I am going to grab a dense foam roller, cutting edge stencils. Buy this for stenciling. Uh, you really want a super low nap, tight, dense foam roller for all your stenciling. The biggest mistake in stenciling is too much paint on your roller or brush. When you have too much paint on your uh, application tool, the problem is, is it's going to flood the stencil and your paint is going to creep underneath. And that's going to give you a less than perfect finish. And that's not what we're going for. We're pushing it here. We're trying to get the best finish possible. I'm going to, I have a paper towel here. I'm going to pour a little bit of black out here. Just enough to do this. A little bit of a mess. I'm going to put that there until I get it cleaned. But just try to clean up after yourself. And then your product, your, your end product will definitely turn out better. I'm going to clean the rim again. I'm going to fold that paper towel in the rim. Clean the rim. I can do a final detail on the can. Now, <clears throat> You could be wearing gloves too, by the way. Okay, I am going to load my dense foam roller. I'm using a flat paint. And here comes your question. So what's an advantage of using a flat sheen paint on your walls? What's, the, what's one of the advantages? Okay, I've loaded my dense foam. I offload my dense foam, perfectly loaded roller, ready to go up to the stencil. This is our hand-drawn Chevron. Back to the question, what is one of the advantages of using flat sheen paint on the wall? First person to answer that correctly in the comments section wins. I'm going to tell you the answer in a second. Don't forget, you can get this stencil, hand-drawn Chevron, you can get this stencil today only till midnight Eastern Standard Time for 40% off by putting Chevron 40 into the coupon box at checkout. Okay, slowly building up my finish here. These stencils have a built-in registration designed into them. Thank you, Jana. We're using our famous cutting edge stencils stencil level or would not do a wall finish without them what this does is save you all this time of marking the wall making sure that the stencil isn't crooked this does it because it's right on the stencil you just move it to the next area align it with these uh these areas here these previously painted areas that we'll have and we'll get more into that you guys you got the answer for me i'm going to give you the answer right now one of the big advantages in a flat sheen paint on the walls is it doesn't show your imperfections. I said it five times, so you guys should have it by now. That's why we use it. Another one that we'll take as a, as a, uh, as a winning answer as well is it's easy to be touched up. 
So I gave you two chances to win, all right? Hand-drawn chevron. I'm not going to go for full coverage. I'm just about done here. Remember, you want to save 40% today till midnight. Then go to CuttingEdgeStencils.com, and this stencil will be uh, on sale. You put in chevron uh, 40 and say 40%. Okay, here we go. Pull this off. This is our hand-drawn chevron. Beautiful. And just, just while I got you, one more minute. You see these areas here? I talked about these registration areas. This is how this works. I line this one up here. I line this one up here. And I'm ready to continue. That's how easy it is to stencil. Thanks for tuning in. This is Greg Swisher saying goodbye from Ramsey, New Jersey. We'll see you next Friday. Have a great day.